Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with five easy to make bee themed farmhouse home decor. So let's get started. For today's DIY number one, we're going to be making a bee themed welcome round using this round sign from Target's Dollar Spot, a stencil and some chalk paste from Magnolia and some ribbon. So this is a two sided round. One side is a chalkboard surface and this side is a kind of a paper covered wood looking surface. It's white and so I'm using my Waverly Antique Wax to darken up the front surface and also the sides. Just brushing that on and then wiping off the excess just to darken up that wood grain um, covered side just a little bit. Then while that's drying, I'm taking these wood letters that are actually from Dollar General, but you can get them from Dollar Tree and other craft stores, and I just have the letters to spell welcome. You could paint these with a paintbrush and chalk paint, but I'm just using a paint marker. Now I'm using Magnolia's Boho Rainbow Stencil. I'm just going to be using the rainbow, and I'm not going to be using the wording this time. I'm fuzzing it so it's not too sticky on my surface. And then I'm just centering that rainbow. I'm going to be using yellow, black, and white on my rainbow stencil. And you'll see some of those um, arches of the rainbow are pretty narrow. So I'm gonna be using skinny pieces of um, cut apart squeegee. And then I'm also going to be using my paintbrush squeegees, especially for those super tight spots. So here again, I'm using Brilliant White, and then I'm going to use Black, and then I'll also use this yellow. I believe this is Canary Yellow. I will verify that in the description box. And here's the peel and reveal. You can see I was rushing a little bit and got a little bit of black in my yellow, but that's okay, I don't mind. Now that my letters are dry, I'm just going to hot glue those underneath the rainbow to finish off the welcome part of our welcome sign. And then we're going to come back to our rainbow now that our chalk paste is dry. And I'm going to use a Sharpie or a black paint marker just to color in the hearts on that farthest out part of our rainbow, just to add a little bit more black to our color scheme of our rainbow. So then once I had all those hearts colored in, we can move on to now painting some beads. I'm just using a couple different sizes of unfinished wood beads from um, Amazon, and this is my method for painting them. I just take a chenille stem and um, feed them on there, and then kind of tie the chenille stem on one of these baskets so that the beads are um, hanging there uh, over the basket, and then we'll go ahead and paint our beads with some chalk paint. I'm gonna do those four largest beads with some white Waverly chalk paint, and then I'll do six medium with the maize yellow 
and six medium with the black. At this point, I wasn't exactly sure where and how I was going to use these beads. I just knew I wanted to have some painted for this series of projects. Then once the beads were dry and we took them off the chenille stems, I'm taking some thin jute twine from Dollar Tree. I have it doubled over, feeding it back through the hole, and then I will double knot it. Then we'll go ahead and string some of these beads on here. Again, this is just an easy way to add a more decorative touch to your projects and make the hanging string part of the decoration. So I'm just gonna do a big white, uh, medium yellow, medium black, and I'm going to do that a few times and then feed the string through the other hole and tie it off to finish our beaded hanger for our sign. The last decoration I wanted to add to this sign is a messy bow. So you can see here I have a variety of some bee ribbons that I found at Dollar Tree, as well as some different yellow and black and white ribbons. So I'm just cutting about seven inch lengths, uh, two of each ribbon, and then we will do a crisscross and then zip tie them in the center to make a easy messy bow that will add to the top of our sign. So now that all of our ribbons are cut, like I said, we're going to crisscross them and then once we have them layered how we want, we'll just take a zip tie from Dollar Tree and um, cinch them all together in the center, fluff them out, trim the ends and add it to our round sign. Now that our bow is all fluffed out, we'll put some hot glue here at the top of the sign, hold it in place just a minute until it is secured. And you can see I also wrapped a ribbon around the center where the zip tie was. And then I'm going to add one of these little B buttons from Walmart right there to the center of our bow. And I absolutely love how this turned out. I love the yellow, black, and white. It's so bright and cheerful. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I sure hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And I hope everyone will hit the bell and set your notifications to all so YouTube will let you know each time I upload new content. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back and thank you so, so much for your support of my channel. DIY number two is a project I've made before, but I'm very excited to make a mini faux book stack with a bee theme using a wooden crate from Dollar Tree as well as some ribbons, some more of those bee buttons from Walmart, and this Waverly chalk paint in maize. This is what I'm going to use to paint the entire outside of my crate the bottom here, the sides, and of course the front and the back. I did not worry about painting the inside or the bottom because this is going to sit upside down to look like a mini faux book stack. 
So once we get our entire crate painted with the maize yellow, we'll set that aside to let it dry. And once it is, I'm getting some of my very old Creative Memories sticker letters. You can use whatever letters you have on hand, or you could also just use a paint marker to write the letters free-handed. I'm just using be kind in all lowercase letters that I had in this black font. Once I have the sticker letters on there, I'm gonna use some matte finish Mod Podge. I'm gonna go over the stickers to make sure they don't peel off, and then go ahead and undo the entire top and front and back sides of the crate. Once the Mod Podge is dry, we can embellish our book stack with some ribbon. I'm using here a burlap uh, gingham ribbon, and here I'm just gluing one end of it to the back side of the crate. And it is a wired ribbon, so I could kind of fold it a little bit around the edges. And then we're just gonna come up and over, trim a little bit here off the back, and glue it back down. I'm only gluing either of the ends, um, so it will be able to move just a little bit around the crate itself. Um, also, this helps if I ever decide I want to change it out and use this crate for something else. Then taking a slightly thinner ribbon, black with white polka dots. This one I did get at Dollar Tree. It is also a wired ribbon. I'm gonna just go over the top of the gingham right in the center just to add a little bit more dimension and interest to our mini faux book stack. After cutting the shank off another one of these B buttons from Walmart, I'm gonna glue that there to the center strip of our book stack. And then we're also going to take some more of the wooden beads that we painted, double over a string of the thin jute twine, put a knot at the end, and then we're going to string two different sets of a few of these beads that we're then going to tie to the top of our book stack. Then once we have our bead strands on there, I'm just gonna take a couple little pieces of greenery and tuck those underneath the knot where the beads are tied to the top ribbon and our little mini faux book stack with the bee theme will be complete. If you enjoy budget home decor DIY videos like this, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as that's what lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and then they will show it to more and more viewers. For DIY number three, I wanted to show you a book stack using actual books from Dollar Tree. You could always do three books like I did with the wood crate version, but this I'm just going to use two. I had two of these that were completely black once you removed the uh, paper sleeve. I did sand down a little bit where the words were. Sometimes those are raised, and then if they're indented or imprinted, um, another thing you can do is take some of this spackle from Dollar Tree and just kind of run it over to smooth out the words on the binding. Then once that's dry, I did sand it just slightly so that then it was smoother and I could paint over it and you wouldn't see whatever the title of the book was.
Then using some painter's tape, I'm just taping off where the spine cover kind of meets the rest of the book. It's kind of hard to see, um, but anyway, I'm making a solid line there because I'm going to end up painting the spine with my Waverly chalk paint in the color maze that we've been using today for these bee themed projects. So just make yourself a line or if you wanted to just keep um, your books completely black, you could um, use different colored stickers, but I'm going to do this to both books and then using some parchment paper inside, go ahead and give my spine one or two coats of the Maze Waverly chalk paint. Once our paint is dry, I'm gonna use those same sticker letters. And this time I'm gonna spell out, welcome to our hive. I'm just starting on the bottom book there. And like I did on the mini book stack, just placing my sticker letters and then we'll go over them with Mod Podge to make sure they don't peel off. And then just like we did with the wood crate, I'm taking the matte finish Mod Podge, going over the sticker letters. I'm also going to Mod Podge wherever the yellow paint is. And then on the very top of our book stack on that top book, I will Mod Podge the entire top of the book just in case um, it gets something wet set on top of it. It won't um, wrinkle up. And now we'll use some other ribbon to embellish our book stack. This time I am tucking the piece of ribbon inside the cover there and then we'll wrap it around. I mostly did this because this is all of this ribbon that I had left, not enough to go all the way around, but it was enough to cover where I needed it to cover. So just gluing the end under the bottom side there and then taking this yellow with black polka dot and going right over the top and this time I am going to go all the way around. I'll also note I didn't show this but I did glue the two books um, together just the back cover of the one to the front cover of the other one. Then I'm going to just add this big sunflower. Um, I believe this was from Walmart and then just tuck a couple leaves under. I just wanted to show you a couple different ways you could embellish the top of a book stack one using ribbon and beads, and the other one here using ribbon and a flower. For DIY number four, we're going to add a really cute bee theme to this wooden cutting board from Magnolia also using a plaid stencil, some ribbon, and a graphic from a Dollar Tree calendar. This is a medium-sized cutting board from Magnolia, but you can find these all over the place, Dollar Tree, thrift stores, wherever. And I'm gonna give it a couple coats of, again, our Maze Waverly chalk paint. Just doing the front side and the edges for this project. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and paint the back. This is a small wood circle from Walmart. I believe these come like six in a pack for under $2. And then I'm using it to trace out around this image, which is on the back of a Dollar Tree calendar. It says, honeybees and flowers, please. Super cute. Then I'm gonna Mod Podge it onto that wood circle. I guess I really didn't need to paint it white beforehand, but I did. 
And um, then we're just gonna use Matte Finish Mod Podge. I am gonna spritz a little bit of water on the back of my circle and then press that down, get it nice and um, attached down. And then once I have it on there pretty good with no air bubbles, I'm going to do another layer of Mod Podge over the top and then we'll set that aside to let that dry. Now coming back to our cutting board, I'm taking this stencil. It's um, from the Mini Dots and Plaid stencil from Magnolia, fuzzing it slightly, and then we're going to lay this over our cutting board, and we're going to use white chalk paste so we get a really pretty yellow and white plaid pattern on the front of our cutting board. I can't say enough about how awesome these stencils are and how easy they are to work with and embellish projects. Of course, if you don't have the stencils and are not interested in the Magnolia products, you can still make these DIYs, just leaving out the step of stenciling a pattern. Once I have the chalk paste applied pretty evenly and any excess removed, I will peel up my stencil and reveal the beautiful plaid pattern on our cutting board. Now while that dries, we'll come back to our circle that's now dry, and I'm using my mini sander to, in a downward motion, sand any excess paper. Then I decided to take a Sharpie and just add some little black stitching marks around our circle to give it a little bit of a frame. And then we're gonna glue that with our hot glue to the bottom right corner of our cutting board. You could glue this right in the center if you want, but I just wanted it to be a little off center and down in the corner. Now I'm going to be making another layered bow. This time I'm using a loop and then a straight piece underneath. This is a thicker uh, ribbon, it is not wired. And I'm again going to use a zip tie to attach these two pieces together. Um, and then once we get that zip tied, we will trim the tails on um, the bow. And you're gonna see I'm also gonna add another loop to the center here. So I'm trying to get it um, for the tails to kind of angle down a little bit, and then I'm gonna dovetail those ends. Now adding some more of this B ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to make a loop and instead of using another zip tie, I'm going to just use a little bit of thin floral wire. So here you can see I'm just kind of measuring the size I want and looping it, cinching it in the center. I'm gonna put this right on top of my burlap bow there. So just cutting a piece of the thin floral wire. I'm just going to wrap it around the center to keep it cinched and then I will glue this one on top of the burlap bow. Then I'll take a thin piece of this black and white gingham ribbon and I'm going to wrap that around the center to finish it off cover up the zip tie and the floral wire. So here's our B loop on top of the burlap and then now wrapping the thin black and white gingham all the way around and gluing it on the back. And now that our bow's complete, we will hot glue it here to where the neck starts on our cutting board. Hold that in place, and then I am going to add um, some little sunflowers. I think this ties in the image on the circle at the bottom, and I just think this is so cute. I left the hole so you could hang this. Be sure to check the description box below the title of this video. That will give you the list of all of the supplies I've used in these projects as well as where I got them. And you will find links to my Facebook page and my Magnolia website. 
DIY number five is one I've wanted to try out for a while, one of these nautical rope beehives. I'm using two of these small plastic pots from Dollar Tree that come in a set of three, and I am going to end up using four um, sets of the nautical rope. So I start out here with one pot. I thought I was just going to make um, this size of beehive, but I'll show you what I end up doing, just using hot glue and going a little bit at a time with the nautical rope. I'm going to wrap this starting at the bottom and going all the way, or actually starting at the top, but the pot's upside down. You can see here, I'm just stacking it. And here's where I started my second um, rope of the nautical rope. And I will not end up using all of this second piece. There will be a little bit left. Then when you get here to the top of your beehive or the bottom of the pot, you'll just, again, keep wrapping it and just go all the way until you fill in that circle completely. So here's what it looks like with one. I decided it was too small and I wanted to double them and glue them together like that. So I ended up doing my second one and then I just had a wood circle. I'm going to glue um, one of my pots too as the base, then putting a bead of hot glue all the way around the lip of this bottom pot. I'm going to then glue the other pot on top of it to make a oblong looking um, beehive. So here I'm putting that other one on top and then we will let that dry and then we will put one more um, string of the rope around the center there to cover up where the two pots were glued together. Now that we have our beehive, I'm using first a Sharpie to freehand an oval. This is going to be our opening, I guess, to our beehive, but I wanted to make it a nice dark black, so I'm using a paintbrush in kind of a pouncing motion with my black chalk paint to fill in the oval for the opening for our beehive. Next, I wanted to make another one of my pulled string burlap flowers. So I have a length of the yellow from Walmart. And once I pull most of the strings out of the center, I'm gonna fold it over and using my Cool Shot Sure Bonder glue gun so I don't burn my fingers, we're just gluing those two edges together. And then you can see how it makes the loops in the center, which will be the petals of our flower. Once I remove those excess glue strings and trim the ends up a little bit, I'm then going to roll this up using hot glue to roll this into our flower. Now that our black paint is dry, we'll take another small piece of the nautical rope and outlining the black oval with hot glue, we'll then put one more piece of the nautical rope around just to set off where the paint starts and stops. Just kind of defines the opening of the beehive.
Now we'll just add some finishing touches to the top of our beehive. First, I'm gonna put a button in the center of our pulled string flower. Then taking a piece of nautical rope and gluing the ends together, we're gonna to make just a little um, hanger for our beehive gluing that loop to the top of our beehive. I did have to hold it in place for a little while while the glue dried. Then I'm going to add a couple artificial leaves and that pulled string flower. And for the final touch, we'll just add a few more of those B buttons from Walmart. I think these were maybe $2.97 and I got, I think there's maybe eight of them, but look how cute those are on the beehive. I think it really finishes it off. Love the yellow of the pulled string flower as well. Hope you guys liked these projects today. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.